Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and after two long years, Rode has finally released an update for the Rodecaster Duo and the Rodecaster Pro 2 that will allow you to use virtual audio tracks on your devices. This means that you can then have audio tracks in Windows that you can capture separately, which is really powerful because it means that you can do things like this in OBS, where you can assign different tracks to different things like music, game and Discord, for example, audio tracks. And then you can edit those channels individually in something like DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is really powerful because it not only allows you to control the volumes of those virtual audio tracks with the sliders, on the devices so you can adjust the volumes and also mute to your audience or mute to yourself those individual tracks but it also allows for the just customization of those audios and allows you to tweak and play around with your recordings a lot more which is really powerful and a much better way of doing things so i'm going to show you how to do that it's worth noting at the current time of making this video it is in beta though so it is in the early stages so you do have to do a couple of different steps to get into it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm going to leave timestamps down below so that you can jump to relevant points in the video if you already know these things. Or if you're watching this in the future when this update is rolled out more publicly and it's available to everybody. And then I'll show you the steps for setting it up in Windows and in OBS to make sure that you can do all these things and make the most of it. So stick with me now and find out more in the description down below as well with relevant links to other videos and things that will be useful. So the first step is you'll have to head over to the Rode website to the beta testing program and I'll leave a link to this in the description and then you'll need to sign up with your email and the product serial number. Now your Rode device, whether it's the Rodecaster Duo or the Rodecaster Pro 2, will want you to download Rode Central if you haven't already and you can use this into the system settings to find the serial number because you're going to need that for the beta update. Now you can do this on the hardware level as well by going to the system settings information and then click to view device information and you'll see the serial number there. So you just follow those steps either on the device or on Road Central if you've already got it installed and you'll see the serial number listed there and you're going to need that to put it in on the website. So put your name and email address in there and then the product serial number. So just run through and put those in and then submit it. And then you should find that you'll get an email with the next steps and this includes a beta version of Rode Central, which you might want to download, and then the virtual device driver, which is essential. So you need to download this as well as the beta update for the hardware, because this will run in Windows and will make sure that the virtual tracks appear as they should. So make sure you download that, extract the files, and then run it until you see it appearing down the bottom here. You should then find it in the taskbar, and you can right click that to see a couple of different options in there and a user guide. Note that it says no Rodecaster connected at the moment and that's because I don't have the beta version of Rode Central installed so you might want to download that if you're worried about that part. The next step is to hit the cog icon on your Rodecaster in the top right. Go to the system settings, go to information and then go to view device information again. Then you're going to tap 12 times in the black area around the firmware version. You'll notice this then puts you into beta mode. From the here, you can then just click back and then check for an update. Now, my connection failed because I'm having problems with Wi-Fi. So make sure you're using Wi-Fi or the Ethernet connection. What I'm going to do is go into the network settings and just change my Wi-Fi device quickly. If you're having the same problems, then this step might help. Just join the network and make sure you join a useful network in your area. So I'm going to use one of my 5G ones and then log into that. And then you'll be able to download the update directly on your device. Alternatively, you can use the Rode Central Beta version in order to do this if you want. So once you've done that, hit the settings cog again, you'll see firmware update available. If you go into the information section, click on update and then click to download and install. And this takes a little bit of time to go through the process of downloading it. And then you have to press a button to install it. And then you've got to wait for it to install and then power off and on again. And so there's a few steps to it. It says not to power off during the process. Make sure you don't do that because you don't want to end up bricking your device. And then you'll have the beta version. Now this is the same process whether you're using the Rodecaster Duo or the Rodecaster Pro 2. But once it's finished and fully updated, click on the settings cog again. Then click on outputs and then on multi-track down there. And then you'll see USB 1 input. Click there and then click on expanded. And this will then apply the virtual audio tracks 
to the device. So it's important to follow that step. Make sure your Rodecaster device is updated to the latest firmware, and then also to make sure that the expanded multi-track is set on. Then when you go into the faders section, you should then find that you can apply a different one. So you click on to add an extra in here, and you'll see there's now a little controller icon and a music icon there with A and B next to them. So if you tap on one of those and then press the tick button, you can then essentially just choose where to put that. So we've now got a virtual track, but we can put it on the hardware slider instead. So you can see I've just swapped it for USB one chat, for example. I'm going to move my wireless mic over to the virtual and just move things around a bit. And you can obviously select and do this until you've got it set up the way you want it. So the other one is obviously we've got a music virtual audio track as well. So we might want to put that in there. So now I've got music and game and my mic and USB one chat on those hardware sliders so that I can adjust the volume of them and mute them individually. And you can move them around until they're in the order that you prefer and that you can easily keep in your mind. And obviously you still have the virtual audio as well. So you've got the multiple channels there. And if you've got the Rodecaster Pro 2, you've got more hardware level sliders that you can deal with. But this allows you to individually control the volume of each of these. So obviously you can turn the music up and down or your game audio or your mic, but with the hardware sliders. So you've got easy controls over those. But what it allows that's more powerful is the Windows sound settings. So right click on the Windows speaker in the taskbar and then go into sound settings and you'll see that you now have virtual tracks in here. You've got game, you've got system, you've got music, and you've got speakers, you've got lots of different ones in there, and then obviously the two microphone ones as well. But the point here is you're opening up extra tracks that weren't there before within Windows sound settings that you can then manipulate in other applications. And this will allow you to then be able to control the audio in OBS, as I'll show you in a second. And this is pretty powerful because it's new and exciting. The next step is to go into the relevant apps and make sure they're set up correctly. So we'll use Discord first of all. You go into the user settings by clicking the cog in the bottom left, then go voice and video, and then input and output devices. We want to set to the chat settings. This will then ensure that when people are talking, their microphone audio is then fed through into that virtual audio track for chat. And then you can adjust that within the hardware sliders and mute or just adjust the volume of them on the fly. One important thing to do though, if you haven't done this already, is to click on the settings cog and go into the output section and then routing. Because what you might find with USB chat is that your friends might be hearing some of your game audio or music audio or whatever else. So you either choose mix minus or custom, I'd recommend custom. In here what we want to do is basically turn off anything that isn't your microphone because you don't want your friends hearing a game audio when they're talking or you're talking to them, for example. So you want to make sure that all the other things are turned off. Otherwise, you might find that they're hearing the game audio going through or your music going through your microphone into Discord and then coming out for them, which is obviously not ideal. Now, you might find you need to play around with these settings because the chat section, for example, you can see that I've muted that here. You might want to turn that back on. You might want to make sure that's on there so that they can then hear other audio because, for example, you might be using soundboards in Discord and things like that. So perhaps if you're doing that, then making sure that's on will work. If you're finding that for any reason they can hear themselves, then make sure that's turned off. But I'd recommend using the custom settings there. Now, if we want to look at music, open up Spotify. And when you've got Spotify open and you're playing some music, what you'll then need to do is to change some Windows sound settings because you need to do this for the relevant apps as well. So this is something that you have to remember each time you want to use a different app. But you go to the sound settings again by clicking on the speaker icon in the bottom right. And then you scroll down to volume mixer. And what we're looking for here is basically to set Spotify as the music output device. So for Spotify, the output device when you're playing music is the music track. And you can see that on the right hand side here if I put them side by side. So you've just got to make sure it's set to music. And then when your music's playing, it will go through there and it will be heard on there. And then you'll be able to adjust the volume just like with Discord. Now you'll need to do this with other apps as well. And this becomes especially important when we get to games in a second. But this means that it will be then fed through properly. So if you find that it isn't working, that's one of the reasons why. And you just need to go into the volume mixer settings in order to adjust that.
with Spotify on that music track, you'll see that you can then adjust the volume of it using the hardware slider. But you're also able to mute it. So you can mute it to the stream so that the recording won't pick it up and still listen to it yourself. This is obviously useful if you want to listen to copyrighted music, but you don't want to end up on the stream. Or if you want stream music playing for your audience, but you don't want to end up with it listening to it while you're trying to listen to in-game sounds, you can mute it to yourself by just pressing the listen button. So that's pretty powerful and allows you to adjust those volumes accordingly. Now for games, you need to first launch the game that you want to play. So in this case, Escape from Tarkov. But this logic will apply to every game that you launch. And you need to make sure you then go into the volume mixer, select from the drop down and set that to be the game output. So under the output device, select game as your option in there. You'll need to do this for every game you launch. Just remember that otherwise it won't appear on the game virtual slider. And then you can just launch your game and you should find that the audio appears in the right place and you can adjust the volumes just as we've done for Spotify and for the chat channels as well. And then you'll have that on the slider and you can see the audio coming through there. And again, you can mute those at the bottom if you want to as well. So you've got easy adjustment of those. But it is important to remember that you will have to do it for each and every game. So it's not like it's going to automatically apply, unfortunately, this time. Hopefully Rode will change that in the future. Because I have seen it with SteelSeries Sonar, for example, which is intelligent enough to work out when a game's launched and automatically put it in the right channel. And I've done a full guide on the Rodecaster Duo using SteelSeries Sonar that I'll link to in the description that you might find useful. But now we can set up these virtual audio tracks in OBS. So click on the settings over on the right hand side and then click on audio. And then you will see here that we have various different audio devices we can select from. Click on the desktop audio and select game as that audio there. And that will obviously put the game audio we've just put into one channel. And then the next drop down, you can select music, for example and put that in there. And then you've got two audio tracks, one for game and one for music. And then for the third one, we're going to set it as the main multi-track. And that's going to be our stream mix, which has everything put into one audio track that you'd use for Twitch, for example, if you're streaming there. And then I'm also going to put the duo chat as another mic source. And that's so that you can have your audio from Discord on a separate track as well. So with that set up, that's one of the steps towards having multi-track audio in OBS. The next one is you need to go into output settings and then tick to have four different tracks under the audio tracks there. And that will ensure when you've got recordings that you have four tracks set up and that they'll automatically put out four tracks every time you make a recording with those individual tracks on them. That is then applied. We're clicking apply down the bottom there. And then you'll see in the audio mix that we now have four tracks here. Now for ease, what I'm going to do is rename these so I can see clearly what they are. So for the first mic audio one, I'm going to put it for the stream mix. The second mic audio one is obviously going to be Discord, so we're going to rename that. You don't have to do this step, it's just for easy use for me. And it makes it clear which track is which, and then music, and then obviously the game audio at the top. So then we're going to have four tracks, clearly labelled and adjustable. Now what you want to do is click on the dot icon, go advanced audio properties. In there you'll see that we have tracks selected and ticked on multiple tracks. What we want to do is basically untick all of these because otherwise you'll end up with all those virtual audio tracks on every recording track that you've got, which is not what you want. So make sure nothing's ticked to start with. And then what you want to do is set the stream mix to track one. That's important, I'll show you one in a second. And then you want to set the next ones up in whatever order you want. So I'm going to have Discord, for example, as track two, game as track three, and then music as track four. And then you can just shut that down and close it. Now, what this is doing is it's separating out the audio into different audio tracks on the file. So when you've saved a recording, it will then have multiple tracks on it. You can see here in the audio mixer, if I activate the soundboard in Discord, for example, you can see that goes through to the stream mix and to the Discord settings in the audio mixer down there. And obviously I've also got music playing at the same time, so you can see the different levels in the audio mixer there. You can also adjust them within OBS as well, obviously, so you can tweak the levels to make them quieter if you want to. Now, if you are streaming, it's important to go to the output section, click on advanced mode on the outputs, and then make sure that audio track one is selected as your stream mix. 
you want to make sure that's the case. Uh, but for recordings, you obviously want to select all four and make sure that they're set up there. But if you have the stream mixes, audio track one, that'll make sure you've got all your audio mixed down into one track that's then sent out to the audience. Now, as an alternative to what I've showed you, you can also change things. So perhaps you don't want to bother recording music as a separate track. So you could just put your duo chat in there as your secondary audio source for desktop audio two instead. And then you could just have three tracks instead of four. But I wanted to show you how you could maybe change the tracks up so you can have multiple tracks at once easily. And then you get in and just get some gameplay. And you should find that you're hearing everything as you should do through your roadcaster, which is perfectly fine. But then when you get your gameplay clip and you drag it into Resolve, for example, you'll then see that it has multiple audio tracks on it with multiple waveforms. And obviously the bottom one, which is the loudest one, and the most consistent is the music track there. But I can go through and I can adjust those because I probably don't want to use the music track unless it's copyright free if I'm making YouTube videos, for example. So you could drop that out entirely. We also can adjust the levels. And I find this really useful myself because I often find that perhaps friends are talking over my gameplay audio or something important in game. So that means you can reduce the audio levels of your friends really easily or you can just reduce the level of the game audio, or you can tweak between these and you can change these on the fly. This just makes customizing the audio for clips and gameplay editing really handy. So this is a nice update from Rode, hopefully improves in future even more. If you want to find out a more in-depth look at the Rodecaster Pro 2 or the Rodecaster Duo, check out the links in the description because I've gone into a lot of depth on them and setting them up. So I'll link to those in the description. But hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.